Hey, I'm Josh. And I'm Victoriana. Welcome to Kingsgate Online. It's so good to have you with us today. Whether you're watching from your home, an office, on the go, or wherever you may be, know that you're not alone right now. Why not take a moment and invite God's presence to be with you as you join us together to worship Him? Our service is about to kick off and we'll be joining our Kingsgate Peterborough campus to start. So let's lean into this service with open hearts and open minds, ready to encounter God in a powerful way. Well, good morning. Welcome to Kingsgate. I'd love to invite you to stand. We're going to worship Jesus. He's worthy. He's good. He's loving. He's kind. Let's go for it. Remember those walls that we caught sin and shame. They were like prisons that we couldn't escape. But He came. He died and he rose. Those walls are rubble now. Remember those giants we called death and grave. They were like mountains that stood in our way. But he came and he died and he rose. Those giants are dead now. Pray, but he heard 
every word, every whisper. Now those altars in the wilderness will tell the story of His faithfulness. Or never once did He fail.
right across the world. You may have heard overnight the attack from Iran to Israel. And so I want us to pray for the protection of Israel, for relief and help and an end of suffering for the people in Gaza. And let's pray of a de-escalation of conflict for wisdom for leaders. And let's pray that the revival that is going on in Iran will spread right across the whole Middle East in Jesus' name. So will you lift up your hands and voices? If you're at home, I invite you to join with us. Come on, let's lift up a chorus of prayer. We are the people of God. We're bringing incense. Call out to Him. Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. You are the ruler of the nations. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. We pray, Lord, let revival break out in that region. Let the gospel spread. Let the church flourish. Let true shalom come. Be relief for those who are suffering. Comfort for those who are mourning. Wisdom for leaders. And an outpouring of your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we lift up our hands. We lift up our voices. We give you a shout of praise. We join with the Day and 
welcome you here, Lord, by your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, welcome to Kingsgate. Special welcome if it's your first time back from our Easter weekend services. Why don't you just turn around and say hi to a few people. Welcome them to church today. To those of you watching online, so delighted you're here with us. Trust you're going to enjoy the service and very much feel at home with us as we continue in our worship service. Well, there is a lot going on in the life of the church right now. Very exciting post-Easter season. To find out more, we're now going to watch church news. called to make a difference in the world? Do you have dreams and aspirations to live your life fulfilling a God-given purpose? Well, look no further, because the Kingsgate Leadership Academy is calling you. The Leadership Academy is focused on creating an environment within which you can experience accelerated growth in your faith journey and unleash the leadership potential within you. During your year with us, you will receive top class teaching and coaching from experts, learning how to cultivate a life builds on a deeply satisfied relationship with God, becoming increasingly confident in your identity as well as your gifts and abilities. And here's the beautiful part. As you journey with us, you won't just be part of the church family, but you'll be contributing to it, learning the art of servant leadership, building strong connections, and embracing that sense of community which is unique to the local church. By the end of it, you'll gain clarity on God's calling for your life, recognizing that you are here on purpose for a purpose. Come on, our ultimate goal in the Leadership Academy is to make this your most transformative year ever. So if you're ready to dive in, just head to our webpage and let's kickstart your leadership journey. Good job. Great, great, great. Great. Well, like we saw there, if you've not yet taken part in Next Steps, perhaps you've started joining us online recently or you've been with us a little while now, but you know it's time to take steps to connect and grow, then our Next Steps course really is for you. Yes, many people in our online campus have done Next Steps and loved it too. So we'd love to encourage you. Why not head over to our website to find out more and get signed up? And it's so exciting to hear about our Kingsgate Leadership Academy too. Yeah. It's launching this autumn and it's something those of us who have been part of the Kingsgate family have invested towards as part of our Think Bigger and Beyond vision. That's right, so if you're interested in finding out more or would like to apply to take part, just head over to the Leadership Academy area on our website. We would love to hear from you. Well, as we continue in our service now, we're going to be continuing our Alive series. And today we're beginning to unpack some of those post-resurrection encounters that people had with the risen Jesus, exploring what they show us and how we can be fully alive both now and forever. And today we have the joy of hearing from Rachel Gardner. Rachel is a brilliant speaker. She's an author and she's part of the team at a national Christian youth charity called Youthscape. In recent years, Rachel and her husband Jason have been planting resourcing churches in the north of England and they're seeing God do amazing things. Yeah, Rachel is a brilliant speaker, so we're really looking forward to hearing from her today. Let's believe God is going to speak to each of us personally as we turn to his word together now.
Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbanai, which means teacher. Good morning. Good morning, Peterborough. Good morning online. Good morning in all the other campuses. I'm so delighted to be with you today. I'm here with my family. We've driven down from Blackburn in Lancashire where it mostly rains. So we're loving the sun. And of course you guys would come to church even though the sun is shining because I can tell just being with you for a few moments, you're a church that loves worshiping Jesus, don't you? Love that. Here are some song lyrics from an artist called Matthew West. Line number one, you're supposed to hold it all together. And when they ask you how you're doing, you smile and say, oh, never better. Lie number two, everybody's life is perfect except yours. So keep your wounds and your messes and your secrets safe with you behind closed doors. I say, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Hey, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. But I'm not. I'm broken. And when it's out of control, I say, it's under control. But it's not. And you know it. I don't know why it's so hard to admit it, but the being honest is the only way to fix it. There's no failures, no faults, there's no sins he don't already know. So let the truth be told. The first truth, the first belief of Christianity is Jesus is alive. Jesus is King. And I love this series, I love this book. You said the book, you should have said the brilliant book, Dave. It's a brilliant book that Dave's written, Alive. And I'm so honoured to be here in the launch of this new season. Let the truth be told. I wonder what the truth that your heart needs to hear today. I wonder what the truth needs to be told in this space. And if I, I think back, pull back for a minute from church life, think about culture. I think one of the truths that needs to be told is that as a human race, we are more in need of real love than we dare to let on. And that we are more prone to look for it in all the wrong places than we dare to let on. And maybe that's true even for some of us here. And the real love that we're looking for it's not about sex, it's not about romance, it's about the kind of real love that makes you feel alive, really alive. Now I'm going to kind of out my age now by saying, do you remember when Billy played Rose Tyler in Doctor Who, when Billy Piper, anyone remember Billy Piper in Doctor Who? Any Doctor Who fans out there? There's a brilliant scene where she speaks the truth I've just been saying, and she's called Rose. She says this to her mum, Billy Piper, Rose says, but what do I do every day, mum? She's Essex, isn't she? So I'm going to do my Essex accent. I get up, I catch the bus, I go to work, I come home, I eat chips, I go to bed. Is that it? And her mum says, it's what the rest of us do. And Rose says, but I can't, mum. I can't just keep doing that. And her mum says, why? Because, because you're better than us. And Rose says, no, I don't mean that. I just mean... 
that when I was with Doctor Who, I got to see what it means to be alive. And I promise the Doctor Who reference will finish in about 10 seconds. But basically for Rose, Rose is saying it's not the intergalactic missions that the Doctor took her on that changed her life. It wasn't even seeing the strange aliens. It was that somehow being close to the Doctor got her to see a different kind of life, a different way of doing life, of being loved. Now Mary could say that, couldn't she? Mary, in our Bible passage today, in John chapter 20, she could say that. Like this life that I've seen in Jesus, I, I want to see more of that. And when we meet Mary in John chapter 20, I, I find her such an interesting character. Because so many of the stories in the Gospels of people encountering the power of God in Jesus, they're kind of like one-off hits, aren't they? Like Zacchaeus, the little guy that climbs a tree and meets Jesus and has his life changed. Or the woman in Samaria at the well, or the woman who is caught in adultery and is about to be stoned. Like we don't really know much about their lives before they meet Jesus, or about their lives after they meet Jesus. We just see that one encounter. But Mary's different. Mary, right at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, Jesus cast seven demons out of her. Like she was one mentally and physically distressed human being. And Jesus heals her. And the hint is that actually he took his time over it. This was a long bit of ministry. And he brought her to full healing and freedom. And from that moment on, if you'd have been Mary, if I'd have been Mary, I wouldn't have gone anywhere else. She stays with Jesus. She's watching him do all these amazing miracles. She's hanging out with the disciples. Imagine what Mary sees. Imagine what she hears. She's always close to Jesus, including when he is betrayed, arrested, tortured, and killed. And so it's not surprising in John 20 that she is there first at the tomb to be with Jesus, but she's expecting to be with his dead body. And she gets to the tomb and the stone is rolled away and she goes in and it's empty. So she runs to get the disciples and they come back and the, John very specifically says, they don't really believe her. That's where they come back. They don't believe her when she says his body's not there. So they go into the tomb, they see that she's right, and they leave. And then what happens is, in my view, one of the most beautiful resurrection encounter stories. Because John very specifically tells us four things that Mary does, very practical, very intimate, very personal, at this pivotal point in human history where we are about to see that Jesus is alive, we get given this really specific information about what Mary does. Let me take you through them. Number one, Mary stays. The disciples run off. I think they're gonna go and give some Roman officials a, a bit of a stink. They're like, where's his body? That's where they've gone, I reckon. But Mary stays because it has become her instinct to stay close to Jesus. And she doesn't know where else to go. The second thing she does is she goes back into the tomb to look again. Have you clocked that when you've read the passage? She comes out, the disciples disappear, and she goes back into the tomb. Why? Why does she go back in? Maybe, a little bit of a silly example, you lose your keys and you look in the same place and you keep looking in the same place in the hope that maybe the keys will suddenly turn up in the place that you've looked. But she begins to look again in the same place. Why does she do that? Is that confusion? Is it disbelief that after all this abuse of her saviour, they would now take his body too and she can't quite believe it? Or maybe in staying close to Jesus, Mary has kind of learned that with Jesus, things are not quite what you imagine. Maybe there's something in there, and you're going to talk about hope in a future week. There's something in her that's just like, I've got to check again. So she looks inside. And then the third thing she does 
is she names her grief. Because when she goes back into the tomb, suddenly there are two angels there. And the angels ask her a very human question. They ask her, why are you crying? What a gentle question that this angelic being asks Mary. Why are you crying? Locate your pain. Locate your grief. Talk about what it means for you that Jesus isn't here. That the one that you've followed and that you've loved, you've watched him die and you're now in an empty tomb. Name your grief. And then the fourth thing that she does is she sees Jesus. Because as she is naming her grief, they've taken my Lord, I don't know where he is. As she's talking about him, she turns around and who stood behind her? Spoiler alert, you can say it, go on. Who is it? It's Jesus. But she doesn't recognize him. I mean, how weird is that? This person that she's been so close to, who she wants to stay close to, she doesn't recognize him. And I love that. I love that, that in the midst of this story of the most powerful narrative the world has ever known of a God who takes on sin and uh, human flesh, who takes on our sin, who dies in our place, who goes into hell and gets, sets the captives free, who comes back alive. In the midst of that story, the way he reveals himself to her is with a long sermon. No. <laughs> With a big song, no. With a, with a big dance, no. What does he do? He names her. He says, Mary. And what does she do? She responds with one word too. She says, Rabboni, master. It's a word of obedience. You are God and I am not. You are king, you are Lord. But it's also a word drenched with so much love. Jesus says, Mary, I see you, I know you, I love you. And Mary says, Jesus, I see you, I get it, you're alive, I'm yours, I'm all in, I'm surrendered, I'm here. Isn't that beautiful? A beautiful moment. I mean, Jesus is so kind. He's a great therapist because the angels say, why are you crying? And Jesus also asks that, but he pushes it one step more. Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Because it's when we can name our grief, when we can name what's really going on behind closed doors, I'm fine, I'm fine, yeah, I'm fine, hey, I'm fine. When we can stop doing that and name our grief and say, this is where I'm at, this is what's hurting me, this is my grief, that we can then identify who then are we looking for. Mary does four very powerful things. I mean, Jesus takes a risk, doesn't he, in making Mary the first to witness his resurrection. I mean, if he wanted to be really clever, Jesus could have revealed himself about 10 minutes earlier when the disciples were there, not just Mary. He could have done something really big there, but he waits. He waits for it to be just him and her because the king of all the universe, who is alive, longs for intimate connection with you and with me. And he is willing, I think, to risk the biggest story not being believed because he longs for intimate encounter with Mary. And of course she is believed and you and I know the story now. But what a savior we have. He loves you, he loves being one-to-one -one with you. He loves to know your heart and say your name. So what does this mean for us then this morning? What about us? Well, look, let's look at those four things again. Stay close. Is that the invitation for you at the beginning of this series as you're exploring what it means that Jesus is alive? What does it look like for you today to experience this real love of God in Jesus? This real love in the resurrected Christ. Stay close 
to Jesus. Stay close to his word. Stay close in worship. Stay close to people who love Jesus more than you do. Surround yourself with people who are infectious with the gospel. Stay close to Jesus. Jesus, just drench me in your love. I'm prone to go looking in all sorts of places for the real love that I can only encounter with you. Stay close. The second one, look again. Maybe some of us in this space, even as we approach the story of Easter that we've just had, we've known this story for so long that maybe sometimes there's a coldness over our hearts. Maybe just the power and the resonance of it is just not quite there. It's become so familiar. And maybe the invitation for you this morning is to run back into that tomb. I'm just checking. I'm just checking that his body's not there. I'm just checking that the one I've given my life for really has risen. I'm just checking this is not all just positive thinking. I'm, not, I'm just checking that I don't go to church just because I always go to church. I'm just checking that actually Jesus is alive and he loves me. Look again. Look again, if you were the only one alive, Jesus would have died for you. Wow, that's easy to believe for someone else. It's hard often to believe for ourselves. Look again. Number three, name your grief. Grief is the shadow side of love, isn't it? We grieve when we lose those that we love. And grief is an important stage. It's a vital stage to go through. It's part of showing that we've really loved somebody. But grief can keep us in the shadows, can't it? Can keep us cold, can keep us hiding away. Name your grief. What's hurting right now? Where do you long to know the risen Christ power at work in your life? Name it. Name it in your heart. Name it to the risen Lord. Name it to someone that you know and trust. Name your grief. And as you name your grief, be real about what it is you're really looking for. Are you really looking for love? Because if you are, and if you can be honest, that will lead you to Jesus, who is love, who will love you, like no one else loves you. Name your grief. And then finally, surrender. Surrender. I think we live in a culture that puts huge emphasis on feelings. And our feelings matter. They're a gift from God. But our feelings don't always tell the truth, do they? (laughs) And um, in this story of Mary, what I love about this is that that they're kind of a 21st century reading of this would say, you know, Mary meets Jesus. Jesus says Mary's name and Mary says Jesus. And they hang there for a long time and they chill out for a long time. And she's just, she's feeling great. And she's feeling full of like wonderful feelings. And she heads home and she, you know, has a bit of me time. And she sort of chills out and gets a good work-life balance. And all that stuff is really important. But that's not what where this story ends, is it? The story ends with Mary doing what? Doing what Jesus asked her to do. Jesus says, now go, tell those disciples who didn't believe you earlier, (laughs) go and tell them that I'm alive and that my God is your God. And there's a mission afoot. There's stuff to be done. Like there's a world to be reached with the power and love of Jesus. So for Mary, knowing this encounter with Jesus, this real love leads her to obedient, getting involved in the mission, to letting other people know about this incredible love. So I wonder where this is landing for you this morning. Precious, precious people of God here in Peterborough at home, in the different campuses. You are loved with a most extraordinary love. And you are loved by a risen savior who will never leave you, who will never abandon you, who will never overlook you, who will never say, they're too much hard work. 
He will love you for the entirety of your life and into all eternity. And this morning, we have an opportunity to receive that, to encounter that incredible love because he loves us. So I'd love us to have an opportunity just to do that, to respond to this love, to ask Jesus to meet with us here now, to have a deep connection with us. I read stories like this, and I love reading the gospel stories. I, I'm such an activist. I, I would have loved to have been you know, on the corner of all these stories, watching Jesus heal people, watching him chat with Zacchaeus, watching him deal with the Roman officials. I'd love to be all there. And when I read a story like this, something in my gut is like real longing, like I long to have a connection with Jesus the way that Mary has a connection with Jesus. I long to be bold like Mary and to stay close to him, to be with him, to look again, to say his name, to step into those spaces to share that he is alive that maybe I feel a bit terrified about. I want to be like Mary. And Jason and I lead a church in Blackburn where for many of our lovely community, lots of folks find it really hard to trust that they're loved by God. For lots of the women and the men in our church, they've been hurt in relationships. They've been hurt by people that said, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, bash, you know. It might be violence, it might be aggression, it might be passive aggression, it might be people just letting them down. It might be friendships that have just gone bad. And when we say, you know, Jesus loves us like this, I'm so aware in Blackburn that revealing the love of God is not something that I can do for them, It's something that the Holy Spirit has to do. The Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. The Holy Spirit who is there with the Father and the Son at the dawn of time. The Holy Spirit who is the beautiful gift that Jesus says, at the end of this story, Mary tries to hold on to Jesus. And Jesus says, Mary, don't grab hold of me. It's a bigger story now. It's bigger. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna leave you my presence. So you will never again be sat outside an empty tomb wondering where I am. You will never again be sat at home as your kids grow up wondering who am I and am I loved and is Jesus even here? You'll never again be in that office, that meeting at work thinking, oh Jesus, I don't know what to do here and I don't even know if you're with me. Jesus says, I go to the Father and I send my Holy Spirit so you will know you are never alone. And this love that you knew when I was walking with you will never, ever leave you. Shall we respond to that? (laughs) Shall we dare to ask the Holy Spirit to press that into us? Friends, you've known Jesus a billion years. He wants to reveal more of his love to you. Friend, today you are saying yes to Jesus for the first time. Welcome to the family and get ready for a tsunami of love that will never leave you. Friend, you're sat here in shame, aware of your sin and your messes and your wounds this week. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. So I just wonder where we are at home, the different campuses, up at the balcony, in the room settling your little toddler in here with us. I'd love to invite you to put your hands out as a sign of saying, Holy Spirit, I am more in need of love this morning than I often let on. I am so in need of a close encounter with Jesus through the Spirit. Holy Spirit, will you reveal to me that I am loved and how deeply I am loved? Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. I want to take some some deep breaths. You're breathing in. (sighs) Breathing in this love. Perfect love drives out fear. As you're breathing in the love that Jesus has for you, you're breathing out the fear that says, but not me. He doesn't love me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
I think there are some of us this morning who maybe do need to look again. And maybe this morning was our last chance Sunday. Maybe we've got through an amazing Easter. So many baptisms here and beautiful things that God is doing here. The open heaven there is here. We feel it in different parts of the UK, what God is doing here. (laughs) That is so precious. Maybe there are some of us in this space that we want to come alive to this love. We want to look again at these familiar stories. Jesus, 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 Jesus. It's almost like you know these stories too well almost. And you really want the impact of the risen Saviour meeting Mary. You want that to move you again because this is the Jesus who meets you. If that's you, you might want to just put your hand on your forehead. Across your forehead, thank you, yes, thank you. Across your forehead saying, Jesus, I know these stories in my head and my heart. I've grown up with these stories. I know that you are alive, but I want, to, I want this to move from my just being head knowledge and I want this to be in my heart, my life, my reality that Jesus, you are alive and you love me and your love will never leave me. So Jesus, with those who've got their hands on their foreheads, you know the battles that are raging in their mind. Jesus, will you come, Lord over our minds, Lord over our thoughts. And may this not just be a truth that we know in our heads, but a truth that is in our gut, our being. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. In a minute, we're going to sing together. We're on the different campuses and at home. We're going to be worshiping Jesus. I think there's one last group. I think there are some folks here. There's this love is burning in you, <laughs> and you would love the courage to share this love with others. So I just want to pray for you. If that is you, just reach your hands out. If, if this, that's it. If this love is burning in you and you don't always know what words you're going to say, but that's okay. Jesus will give you the words when you need them. So for those who've got their arms out, Jesus, thank you that like Mary, when we surrender, when we receive your love, you send us out to express that, to speak that, to declare that, to live that. Jesus, for my brothers and sisters with their arms out, will you by your spirit give them the courage to speak your love, to live your love, to share your love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Friends, if God's been doing something and you would love someone to pray with you, there's a wonderful ministry team. If you need to be naming your griefs, sharing some stuff, we've got a wonderful team. But can I invite us, if you're willing and able, let's stand together and we're gonna sing. We're gonna sing and declare to this one who loves us, who is alive. And let Jesus keep working in you as we are worshiping. Thank you, Jesus. How great is your love that never gives up on me? Stronger than shame and carries me back to you. How great is it? How great is your love that never gives
Well, thanks so much for being part of our service today. If you're making a decision to invite Jesus into your life or you're recommitting your life to him, we'd love to hear from you. So please do let us know you're responding. We're here to support you on your journey. Yeah, and for all of us, we'll be unpacking this whole focus on how we can come fully alive as we experience Jesus' transforming love in our groups this week. So be sure to head over to our website to join an Alive group if you're not already part of one. Looking forward to being back together here online next week as we explore another encounter people had with the risen Jesus. It's going to be great. Yeah, until then, have a really good week. See you soon. 